You heard it? Is it Malok Malokia? Which is the famous? Is it Turkey national di Turkish national dish? Malo Maloki Maloki or some Maloki Maloki or something like that. That's Mal. Oh yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's edible. Um, but what people tend to do is, you know, in the food for free books and stuff, they say take it off as it is and deep fry it and it makes it really nice crisp. Or it's the staple ingredient. In yeah, it. you say it being crisp because it'll, uh, it's a bit like um, basil or crisp. Uh, what else have we got here? There's lots and lots of stuff. This is white dead nettle. Obviously, it's a member of the nettle family, but it's because it's a dead nettle, it's non stinging. Oh, right, okay. But I mean, if you wanted to do something like you can, so it could grow in absolute abundance. Once it's one of those. It tastes things. the same as. Um, Identical. Yeah, same as normal so nettle. You can make like yeah. nettle tea and nettle like pesto, I mean, nettle yeah. infusions, that sort of stuff. If you want to go out and collect it, I mean, to be honest, especially in this area, I wouldn't have any hesitation about collecting this because it's so prolific. Um, red dead nettle is a bit more rare, so I would tend to stay, to stay away from that. But the white stuff is just everywhere down here, especially. Well, it's one of those things when you know, once you get your eye and see it once, you'll see it everywhere. Yeah. Uh, when it grow, young, when it's it's one of those weird plants. It's got two names. When it's younger and it's just green, it's called people class it as chervil. It's closely related to the member of the chervil family more than parsley. But when it grows up to a mature plant, people call it cow parsley. You've got to be careful because this is a member of the umbilifer family. So there is a couple of nasties in here. This fool's parsley. There's also another plant called hemlock water dropwort, which doesn't look anything like this, but it's probably one of the most poisonous plants in Europe. It, you know. Uh, that much. Or more in the fox May glove. Oh, way, way more. Two leaves about that size can be fatal. Really? Yes. Very much so. It's probably one of the da most dangerous plants. And the strange thing about hemlock water dropwort is there's none here. Uh, but when you see it, you go, oh, that looks like wild parsley. And then when you look at the stems, you go, oh, hang on a minute, that looks like celery. And then you dig up the roots and you go, hang on a minute, that looks like wild parsley. It is one of those plants you look at it and you go, mmm, that's edible. And it is absolutely deadly. And this has got the purple stalks on it. Yeah, purple. It? The easiest way to identify it is it's got purple stalks on the bottom. There's always a purple current on it. Fool's parsley itself looks very similar, but the, these these leaves will drip down. I, I don't know that much about fool's parsley because I haven't come across it. There's not. It's not really much in this area. So I mean, the easiest way to identify chervil is by the purple stems on the bottom. But if you're not sure with this sort of stuff, be 110% sure because there is a couple of real nasties in this family. So it's best. It's like mushrooms. Don't you know? Be 110 percent sure of what you're eating. Because bramble over there. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I can say all mushrooms taste fantastic once. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's another poisonous one down here. This is red robin. Uh, it kind of looks edibleish, I suppose. You could get it confused with it. it's parsleyish, but that's another nasty. Uh, on and off two years, uh, four times as much as it can, three months. But I'm, as I said, you know it's minimum of two or three hours a day and I'm out with a professional forager so you know he's keeping a watchful eye. Here's another quick one here this is ground ivy in flower uh, otherwise known as uh, the old English name is ale hoof because it's used for clarifying ale beer. Mm. Um, I guess you could call it edible it doesn't taste particularly fantastic um, the flowers are nice in salads. So they use that instead of um, linens? Used to use that instead of um, I can't remember, there was another plant they used before. That was they used that predominantly, and then when hops was introduced, they used hops. Uh, and you get, you'll see uh, the hops are imported by the Romans as well, and you'll see that grown peripherically in hedgerows once you know what yeah, you're looking for. Yeah. There's another one of those things that are hard to find, then all of a sudden they're everywhere. Um, and obviously, you've got a spear thistle here. Uh, I've, not, I've not dabbled with this yet, but apparently, if you dig it up, if you get a good sized plant, if you dig it up, the root itself, if you peel back the thorns with the aid of a sharp knife and gloves, uh, it's very similar to an artichoke. Oh, okay. But I've not tried it myself, but it is edible. And that's young Alexander's. Obviously, we've got we're starting to come onto sea beet now. There's a lot more down here. Easy to show you. There's lots and lots of nice stuff along here. Uh, comes into, I mean, there's a little bit of the white flowers themselves are from spoon leaf scurvy grass grown through it. Peter vulgaris maritime, maritima. Excuse me if I get any botanical names wrong today, we've got the hangover from hell. Feeling <laughs> rough, yeah? Yeah. Shoved the bottle of water. Water over there. This is 
so when it, you start to hit good patches of sea beet, it grows in abundance. That's sea beet, yeah. That's that's sea beet, and again, it's got spoony scurvy grass growing through there. This, this was originally spoony scurvy, scurvy grass was originally used by uh, sailors uh, to it would, the plant would be dried or stored. Uh, it's got very high vitamin C content, so it would be used to, to ward off scurvy. Now, uh, when it's younger, before it bolts and flowers, there are nice. I can find you a nice young leaf. It tastes a bit like there's three different plants in here actually. I'll just put this down. Sponsored by Cheap Energy Drink. <laughs> I'll find some. I'll pixelate that. <laughs> I can't find some, I'll find some more. Try the leaf off this. I'll, I'll find you a better one in a bit. Now it's green and it's succulent, but I think it tastes it's got a little bit of an aftertaste. It tastes like Coleman's mustard powder. It's got a mustard taste like yeah. it's on the back of it. It's like That's dry exactly mustard. It like yeah. mustard powder, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does, yeah. Now this can be used. That's quite nice, that is actually. Yeah, well, it's, we use this in the salad uh, for the, the restaurant I was telling you about. The white flowers can be collected uh, when it's bolted, and they can be used in salads. But I'm not, I don't, I'm not really fussed on these to be honest. If you try the flowers themselves, they've got a slightly bitter aftertaste. I'd, I wouldn't personally go out my way for them. There's other nicer flowers to decorate salads with, but that's what they want, so that's what you get. Slightly bitter, isn't it? Yeah, there's a slight. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, it's more. More unenjoyable than enjoyable for me, so I wouldn't. That leaf, that, that first leaf, excuse me, that's that. Yeah, the nice old munchkin on that. Uh, there's obviously there's all different kinds. Of, if you can just backtrack, sorry, yeah, there's another one I want to show you there. Yeah. That's spoon leaf scurvy grass. There's another one here. This is frosted sea orange. This is another nice one. I mean, this grows up to, in abundance. It grows everywhere this time of year. Uh, this is a member of the orange family. This is it's called frosted spear leaf orange. But if you try that. That's nice, it's got a, a green taste again, which the majority of plants have, but it's got a slightly sage taste to it as well. That's probably one of the nicer forageable foods. You know, you use that, you would use it, and young like this, you would use it raw in salads, or you could even pan fry it very quickly. Somebody just fell off the bridge. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> like it? It's got a slightly sagey taste, isn't it? Yeah, it has, yeah. Yeah, it's still got a really quite a strong green taste to it. Mm -hmm. uh, what else have we got to come along? Now uh, these are, well, should, there's more of these, but you can see them over there if you pan your camera around. This is sea aster. These are another really nice one. These are one of my favourite uh, sea vegetables. These are nice. These have got a really nice salty, crisp, crunchy taste, and they're great either pan fried very quickly or even when they're young used again in salads. Mm, that's nice. Mm. That and the frosted um, orange are probably one of my favourites. Very so that small leaf they gave me is nice, it's that one with mustard. Yeah, the spoony scurvy grass, there's bigger, there's better mm. stuff over there. The sea plantain and a few other bits and bobs we'll go and look at in a minute. There, yeah, you can see how much that in abundance it grows in the right environment. Who's that? It's a very similar leaf shape to that frosted one, isn't it? Yeah, and this is... Oh no, it's not. Let's have a look. There is some... <laughs> there is some... Yeah, this is it, yeah. There is some sea blight coming through, but we think it's slightly yellow at the moment. I mean, the same again, once you look at this, you'll see it everywhere. It's, it's a little bit similar to samphire. Yeah, I was going to say, that's very samphire-ish. But because um, we've had really, really heavy rain over the past fortnight, we think it's gone slightly yellow because it's had a really big, massive influx of fresh water into it's it. It's quite salty, isn't it? Yeah, so we're hoping it's going to recover. Um, it's a bit like samphire, similarish taste. Yeah. This tends to come through before the samphire. This, I mean, this will come through probably be about a month ahead, so we will use this at some stages. Um, waiting for the sandfire to come through. What's this now? He's run off. This is the same stuff. <laughs> now, I don't know what that is, mate, so I wouldn't bother touching it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not good. <laughs> it's a succulent. I haven't, I haven't got my book with you. It's not, I mean, it's not sandfire. Uh, and it's, it's not. It's rosemary looking, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know to be honest, Henry would know. I'd, I'd... Something to try them if you want. This is the spoon leaf scurvy grass, yeah? This is really nice, really nice and salad and stuff. There you go. 
here's the, here's the, you can see why it's called spoon leaf scurvy grass by the shape of it. Uh, you know, it looks like an old fashioned holy boldy spoon. Um, the sea beet itself, so you can see the shape of the leaves, They're very common. The younger green shoots can be used in salad. Uh, this is sea beet is the father of all domestic spinaches, uh, you know, Swiss chard even down to beetroot and stuff. This is the, the founding plant where well, lots of different genes have been taken off. Uh, it's a bit weird, the normal spinach, the younger stuff is the most tender and sweet, isn't it, and as it gets yeah. older. Well, this is yeah. the opposite way around. The bigger the leaves get, the more sweet and sudden it gets. And it's really, it's a beautiful veg. I eat this pretty much two or three times a week. It's very easy to collect, very proficient. Uh, pr proficient. Uh, and it doesn't lose its volume like normal spinach when you cook it. It tends to keep a lot of its mass and it's very, it's got a lovely rich taste to it. It's very nutritious. Mm. Um, let's go and have a look and see what else there is. Take me down here. <laughs> I wouldn't follow me because this is all wet and flat mud. This is sea plantain, another edible. Uh, gets a bit, you can see it's been a bit nibbled by bugs and stuff, but you know, when they're younger, the leaves themselves are really nice. And if you have a little chew of that, well, you see it, and there's lots of it everywhere now. If you try it, it's like a salty green pea. Yeah. It's a bit like um, green pea shell. Yeah, it is, isn't it? But it's nice and yeah. quite edible. Um, and then we'll head down now, show you some pennyworts. Uh, and then we'll go on to the other side. And there's lots and lots of edibles there. For our food tonight, I've got um, to do the. Well, the guy's saving us a marrow bone. To do the beef. I've got bay with me, I've got wild onions, and I've also got some wild carrots to show you. Nice. Still got impala of sausages as well. Yeah, I've got impala sausages. <laughs> we'll get them on the go when we get back. Got the sausages for start. There's only six of them, so it makes a nice little appetizer. We don't know, we were having a look at this the other day. It's a succulent of some sort, I don't know, it's, I wouldn't, I don't know, Henry, uh, Henry's not really sure to be honest, and this is the guy I go over on a regular basis. Um, I, I'll look into it, but personally I wouldn't bother with it, it doesn't look, it doesn't, you know when some plants look right and some don't. It doesn't look like it's got much nutritional value to it at mm. all. There's no water in it, no moisture content, there's no no, It's quite dry, isn't it? It's very dark. Yeah, it's probably it? just this, I mean, this, if we walked 100 yards down this coast, you're probably coming across easily 100 to 150 different types of plant. It is absolutely heaving down here as it is with most cold lines, coastlines. We're actually on the Bristol Channel at the moment. Yeah. And you can see by the mud itself, it's very clay-based and very nutrient-rich and stuff. So I'm quite lucky in the area that we do, we, everything does seem to grow in abundance. I mean, this sea asters will get huge eventually. They'll get to sort of the size. Um, we'll go to three different sites today. Uh, the second site we're going to go to now is a lot. There's a lot of wild herbs there and stuff. And um, this is just a basic introduction to a bit of coastal foraging. You can see how easy. If I was ever stuck in a situation, not that I ever planned to be, um, but I had to look after myself for a while, I would want to get to the coast because everything is at your feet here. You know, I've tried. To, we spend a lot of time in the woods and stuff, uh, and you're a bit limited with your choices there. You can get to a bit of coastline and stuff, everything is just grows in absolute abundance. Very pretty. Oh, it's, uh, oh, yeah, it's penny work. Mm. yeah, there's a very very high mush content, but is that you film again, yeah? Yeah. There's a penny words obviously or navel words depending on where you're from. It's a, a suckling that grows in the wall. And they're very nice. Um, but a lot of people that are into the foraging and stuff actually. Uh, this is one of the, the, the higher in the list type of thing that they prefer to go for. Yep. Yeah. Well try it before. Try it before. Yeah. Mm. Green succulent, very moist. What vegetable do you say it tastes like? It's like a runner bean, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, more than it. That the uh, sea plantain is like this. Flavour wise, I'd say kind of a French, French fine bean. Or oh, okay. <clears throat> Got cucumbery kind of taste as well. Mm. And this is obviously when it's starting to bolt and come into flower and gets these quite weird shaped growths in it. But yeah, it's another thing we use in the salad, or you know, if you wanted to collect this, you would. I wouldn't personally cook it. I would use it as a green ingredient yeah. uh, in, a, in some sort of salad or something or as a garnish or... Hey, what's, what's the uh, stalk? Yeah, you carry on it. Yeah. What's the stalk like? I don't know, give it a bash. It'll be edible, the whole plant is. 
See, that would be quite nice to put into a kind of a... You, you, tend to, like you tend to find with the strange thing with plants is sometimes when they bolt the, the stem that comes off them actually tastes rank compared to the rest of the plant. It's quite nice actually. Oh, that one wasn't. <laughs> uh, this is something called charlock, member of the Brasca family. Uh, it gets a bit fluffy at this time of year but you know it's when it's on smaller sort of like very early spring and stuff it's a nice ingredient in, in wild salads again. Uh, it's obviously a member of the cabbage family so if you have a little chew of that stem already. Yeah, just have a little chew of the stem just to get the flavour of it. Mm. You can't tell on this uh, screen, but it's a fairly dark sort of green colour, isn't it? Yeah. Compared to it's, some of the others. It's very distinct when, you know, it's it's one of those things where you start off, you never, I mean, it's to take on board, uh, you know, a whole shed load of plants at one time is quite difficult. If, you, if you're going to get into foraging as a cautionary you note, know, the one thing I would say is learn the nasties first yeah. and learn them well. Uh, and then you'll, you'll you'll start to you know pick up things as you go along. You'll recognise these just by the look of them after a while. But they're very distinct, especially this sort. When they when they're younger and smaller, you can confuse them with a few other things. Another one you've got to be very careful of is ragwort, um, which we'll see later on. Um, I would like to show you how much water drop worth today, but there's none up this part. Um, that was down at Black Rock where I showed yeah. you last night. It just grows in profusion down there. And if anybody tells you, there's an old English saying that hemlock water drop were always grows with its feet in the water it's absolute nonsense it grows in the middle of fields anywhere uh, and as I said it, 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 everything about it says eat me and it's as well cleavers yeah uh, I've not really I've not really dabbled with them uh, sticky but yeah like, they're, they're they're edible but the kind of weed, yeah the kind of when you eat them you end up with this big you know like celery you got the string in celery you end up yeah. with this big massive sort of mulch in your mouth now, I did see on the forum the other day somebody posted that they use the top of cleavers as an ingredient in stews and stuff um, and they're supposed to like infuse quite a nice flavour into it so I will give that a little dabble one day um, but it's on the back burner there's a few other nicer things oh, peel the fluffy stuff off yeah I'll try that if you want there's a nice big succulent bit it tastes just like cucumber you can actually bite a piece off if you want if it's not too woody it's quite woody mm. they used it in pims you said yeah they used it as an ingredient in pims to flavour pims before cucumber become commercially available before the Started yeah, exporting it's very much for cucumber, it. Yeah. But again, it's edible. You know, you can people use it for different things. Sometimes you use the flowers, or I think the whole plant can be cooked if you want to. Um, it's nice, you know. It's better. A lot of this stuff is better in the springtime. A little bit more flavour to it. Come across the other day. It tastes very similar to uh, well, it's shepherd's purse. Uh, it tastes very similar to hairy bittercress. It can be used in salads and that sort of thing again. Um, it's very distinct when you see it because it's got these beautiful little flowers. Right. And it looks like an old traditional shepherd's purse, which they used to hang on the belts. Uh, but yeah, it's nice if you want to try a bit. I'm going to give it a miss. Too much dog shit there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll yeah, see what you Excuse the turd in the background. <laughs> this is dog walking city. Hello buddy, how are you doing? You alright? I'm alright mate, I'm alright. I'm recovering from a serious port hack, but I'm alright. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you say that lemon stuff was Oh, lemon there? balm. Yeah, yeah this is lemon. Wild, wild, wild lemon balm. Yeah. That grows fairly so well. It looks very much like mint leaves, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, it looks a bit like wild is it, mint is it as well, in the I same suppose. Way? Of what, sorry? Is it in the same sort of family as mint? Uh, I I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. I would, have, I would have thought so by the shape of mm. it, to be honest, and the texture of it as well. Is yeah. Very similar. But when it's grown, when it comes, I mean, it was tiny before. And it's quite a slow grow. When we seen it originally, it was this very be lemon, yeah. beautiful yeah. yellow green, sort of really vibrant. It's like a sherbet lemon. Mm. Yeah. yeah, sherbet. Yeah.